Um, so, uh, as Yarek mentioned, my name is Yochai Korem. I'm a Vice President in SAI. Uh, let me give you two words about SAI and dive then dive into uh, the topic of this discussion, which is, you know, why hacking sometimes is, is so easy. So, um, SAI uh, has been established uh, in 2012. Uh, for those who don't know it, uh, it was founded by the team, actually, who was the national red team uh, in Israel. Uh, the team that for quite a while were assessing the critical infrastructure, the military, the government environments for you know, potential um, weaknesses and helping uh, our uh, defensive teams uh, fix those before uh, our adversaries will, will do so. So uh, we're about 70 people today. Most of us, I would say, are national red team experts. Um, with offices uh, in different parts of the world, as you can see here. Um, our, our mission statement is, is quite simple. We want to help organizations become more mature uh, by applying the offensive perspective on the existing security controls. And we work quite a lot in the last few years uh, in multiple industries, including those of uh, ICS or SCADA, uh, both in energy, um, oil and gas, uh, healthcare, manufacturing, uh, pharma, so have quite a lot of experience um, with uh, different companies and how they, uh, what are the methods they use actually to protect and how effective they are. So when we go to an organization, what we try to offer is actually a very clear understanding of how a hacker would look at them and whether the existing controls are, are effective as mentioned. For that, we are using a Hiver, which is a platform that we have developed, which is using a combination, a unique combination of both man, machine, and community in order to be able to identify the current security posture and then what are the different ways or what are the tech routes into the organizational crown jewels or business critical assets. And then on top of that, identifying the mitigation or the most cost effective way to um, work with the mitigation options that are in front of the company. So, so let me go a little bit into, into more details. When, when we look at Hiver, we actually have three main layers. The first layer is actually all about assessing the organization, meaning trying to identify from different threat actors what they can see and how they can you know, enter the organization. Um, the next layer will be to be able to transfer these um, cyber results into a clear business risk discussion, because at the end of the day, we're talking about the business risk. And the third layer is once we understand the risk is what should we do and actually helping the organization create a very clear prioritized set of uh, ideas of what need to be done in order to reduce uh, reduce any any results. So um, let me take you first through the first layer, which is um, taking us through the assessment part. So the assessment part is done with a combination of both our experts. This is how we started a few years ago already. And then going into the, um, uh, since 2016, we were able to develop a technology uh, that took a lot of the knowledge of our experts and put them into automation. In addition, we're working with a community of a few hundreds uh, experts around the world, which helps us to get more understanding of latest tools, capability, and techniques related to, uh, to a tech's, uh, attack option. And especially in, let's say, the ICS environment, we're able to tap into the knowledge of experts around the world related to different techniques for you know, new um, PLCs and other uh, um, information that may, we may have not have at this uh, current uh, time. So when we start an assessment, the first stage is always reconnaissance. So what we try to identify with is how the organization looks like from the hacker perspective. What are the digital assets that could be identified? And here, you know, the starting point from our perspective usually is just the name of the organization. From the name of the organization, we develop technology that does automatic reconnaissance, trying right, to identify information in different uh, sources. Some of it is passive, so open source information, and some of it will be also um, active, depending on what we agree with the organization. And what we try to actually to collect is actually two, two areas. One is what will be the technological, let's say, structure of the organization or the, uh, the different uh, systems that are being used, right? And, you know, the associated domains, IPs, et cetera, allowing us to uh, analyze and come uh, up with a list of the known vulnerabilities, the network level of vulnerabilities, the application vulnerabilities, and different open administrative interfaces. And the second part will be actually to collect all type of credentials that we're able to identify. This includes user credentials, username, passwords, or hashes, etc., from 
you know, from LinkedIn scraping all the way to um, to dark web uh, breaches that uh, information that we can find. And of course, also information that relates to credentials of applications. So if it's used GE or Siemens, we want to, and we're able to identify the specific versions or technology stack, we may want to, to understand what are, what, uh, you know, manuals could be found uh, and what are the default username and passwords of different um, modules within the systems. Um, so we're able then to uh, create a credential dictionary that could be used into the organization. In addition, we're trying to identify all the different branches, locations, and to attribute, identify where the main data centers is in order to, at the end of the day, come with a prioritized list of a tech plan that we can then execute on the organization. Once we have created that tech plan and we have clear you know, understanding where what is that tech surface, then we're actually moving into that tech itself. So here we are trying to uh, execute multiple attack options on uh, each of the um, you know, findings that we identified in the reconnaissance. So for example, if we found a login page, we, can, you know, we may try different types of attacks from SQL injection to password spray in, our, in order to identify you know, ways to bypass the existing security controls. So this is a very iterative process that at the end of the day should allow us to get uh, to bypass those controls and get into side uh, the network. At the end of the day, this process is done, as I mentioned, with a combination of mainly two elements, right? Um, the virtual hacker, which will try to do whatever we can automate um, from the reconnaissance and, you know, all those things that hackers spend a lot of time but don't really, you know, uh, use their brain so much. Um, so between 50 to 80 percent will be done by our uh, virtual hacker and the rest will be done by our experts who can uh, understand the business context of you know, where the attack is and come up with those ideas how to uh, move uh, further. As mentioned, we can also apply to the community and ask questions related to specific technology stacks that we want more information. Now, when we talk about um, ICS or SCADA assessment, there are a few considerations that need to be taken into account. And this is the reason you should only work with people who has a lot of experience in this specific field. So for example, um, I would say safety is above all. When I look at relevant, you know, other IT environments, usually reliability, confidentiality, privacy, and integrity, right, are topics that are, are, are important. But in ICS environment, safety is even more important. We need to validate that this is still in place. In addition, uh, also in IT environment, but especially in OT uh, considerations, zero downtime is required with clear zero impact on business activity. Sometimes restarting a plant is something which is very long and and complex and we want to verify that no, uh, no effect is done on business operation. This means, for example, that usually no exploitations are being done, right? So if in an IT environment, we may want to exploit the server to see whether we're able to use an available vulnerability. In OT, in many cases, uh, risk exploitations are, are excluded or done only in, in test environment rather than the real operational environment. Another element will be the reconnaissance. So in this uh, environment, we will not use any scanning activity, uh, for example, but we'll use only passive uh, collection uh, methods in order to uh, identify, you know, what are the uh, elements within the network uh, without thinking or, you know, being in a situation to take it, to have a downtime of one of the elements. The focus will be on interfaces, both on OT IT interfaces, OT internet interfaces, OT third party remote management interfaces, because this will be the greater risk. And we will also want, we understand there is a difference in OT environment in the identity management model, meaning there's a role-based versus individual users, you know, so someone is a shift manager rather than a specific, specific user that is logging in. So the entire identity management model is different from IT. Password management is different. So uh, this needs to be taken into consideration when assessment is being done. So let me take you into a specific example to make it a little more live, right? So so here, what we see is a typical uh, company that, you know, we had several of those assessments. Um, we, we may have different starting points for the assessment. The typical one will be black box approach, starting from the external exterior of the company, or could be also where we already have an employee workstation. So someone in the, let's say, finance department or, you know, HR department within the enterprise and you know we want to validate what what such an employee can do you know going inside this could be of course a full employee someone who who has you know uh, mistakenly pressed uh, a link and has a victim of a phishing attack 
attack or someone that is, you know, maliciously you want, want to make damage. And we saw those examples in the past. So wh whatever the starting point, what we'll try to do is go through the process I described, going through the reconnaissance and, and planning, and then uh, starting with the attack itself. Um, and the goal, of course, is to uh, take control of the enterprise environment, right, as much as possible, all the way to be a, a, a full administrator there, and then identify the connection uh, layers between the, uh, in, um, you know, the IT or the enterprise areas to the to the OT area, um, where there's also some IT elements there, um, and then, of course, be able to fully take control on the ICS environment itself, from the HMI, uh, the historian, etc and be in a position actually to control, um, you know, the different production systems. Um, so, so we have several examples where we have done that, right? So, um, um, so, so in, in typical, when we start, there are different ways. So either using uh, an application uh, vulnerability and network open interfaces or social engineering like email, uh, phishing, uh, passwords, for, et cetera. Um, once you are able to go through the uh, f first uh, foothold of an organization, we usually try to be in a position to show uh, impact uh, on the business. So this could be, for example, taking control of the CRM system like Salesforce or others, be able to take uh, a strong user in the Office 365 file system. So be able to open different shares and different files. Uh, very interesting sometimes to see the, uh, to and not that complex from cyber perspective is to take control of, you know, video conference systems, so you see a meetings, uh, here you see a CEO of a company with a secretary in the board uh, boardroom. I take control of security cameras, they can teach us of, you know, who is in the building in different areas and, and what's going on to plan further steps. Um, we usually try quickly to identify the IT people or the OT uh, people and then take control of the help desk. So those users, users are usually more powerful, so this is an area which we try to go after. In some cases, we want even to take uh, control of VoIP uh, systems, so the telephony system of the organization, and then the C-level, for example, recordings they use for, for areas using voice biometrics. Um, it's important to know who is trying to, to detect us, so we'll try to find the SOC or the Security Operations Center and see, you know, can we see their cameras, can we see their screens um, to understand what they see about us. And another very typical uh, actions we, we in many cases use uh, do is try to take control of the badge control systems and actually be able to assign ourselves um, a, a powerful badge so we can actually go into the organization and open doors. Usually when you have a badge, no one asks you a question. So in, in one of those um, uh, situations, after we were able to have a good uh, foothold within the IT environment, we were able to get an admin to a jump station that actually connected the IT and the OT environment. And from there, we got actually access to the HMI of the manufacturing line. Of course, there was some, um, uh, let's say, endpoint protection on those. And as you can see, we have a full control of the environment without having those endpoint uh, protection detecting us, right? So uh, as we know, they're uh, not always effective. Uh, recommended, but still not always effective. This is one, one example. And that allows us to take uh, access of the HMI uh, of the manufacturing line. Um, now, this specific was actually um, a farmer case. And what you see here is actually a connection to uh, a nuclear reactor, you know, um, you know, so you can imagine the potential impact uh, as an explosion to such reactor could cause, could cause a, a potential damage of a radius, you know, up to either 30 kilometers. Um, so, you know, um, it, it's, it's, as you see, this is an example of a real attack that happened, again, finding the, the jump station between the IT and OT environment. Another example that we had uh, in the food industry, um, so um, again, in this case, we're again starting from the uh, IT environment, and we were able then to identify um, uh, specifically, in this case, the SAP systems, the ERP system used by the organization. Once you got into the SAP system, because it was so connected to the manufacturing, I would say smart manufacturing, right? We're able then to get the connection to the HMI, right? And which helps us actually to be in a position to co co completely change the process if we required. So you can actually see uh, milk uh, temperature, right? In some of the food uh, manufacturing processes. Of course, um, you know, uh, you could really, uh, you know, poison environments. You can cause catastrophic damage to, to such an organization in such case and you know what i'm not sure even the organization will understand you know what's going uh, wrong just the products that are out uh, are, are failing the quality control or in the customer themselves 
Um, unfortunately, um, so these assessments helps us, you know, tell the organization what they need to do better, right? Uh, unfortunately, some organizations, um, you know, come uh, too late. So here you can see an example of an organization coming to us with a specific uh, issue after a big ransomware uh, that has compromised the environment completely, all the servers, including the backup of the OT environment. Uh, unfortunately, paying the ransom did not help as the attacker didn't provide any decryption keys. So, you know, there were very limited actions could be done. And of course, I don't uh, recommend any organizations to be in such uh, such position. So, um, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do in such examples is not only tell the story or see the different findings, but actually help the organization uh, understand, you know, um, what is the context of the attack. And what we're trying to do, as I mentioned, is transfer that into a clear uh, risk uh, posture. So what we, are, we have a system that what we're doing, we are actually creating a very interesting graph. On the left-hand side, we have the different threat sources where we started the attack. And again, usually we try to start from more than one position to give a very comprehensive and holistic understanding. And on the uh, right hand side, you can see the different, let's say, business critical assets, you know, nuclear reactor, safety, you know, sensitive data, reputation, et cetera, what was really, really critical for the organization. And as you saw during the assessment, we'll try to identify potential vulnerabilities that allow us to jump from position to position in the network. And each edge in the graph here is actually an exploitation that we're able to, uh, to use. So um, with, with usually a duration of a few days to a few weeks, depending on the size of the organization, and again, in a combination of both man and machine, we're able to identify as many uh, potential uh, vulnerabilities and issues in the cu current controls of the company security, and uh, then build um, what we call an attack route. An attack route is a combination of multiple issues that helped us actually move further in our attack plan. There may be other even critical uh, vulnerabilities that were identified, but if they didn't help us move further, then there are less of an interest in terms of the business impact, right? So what you can see is actually the, the full in one view, the full current security posture of the organization, of course, with the evidence for each of those. This is not a what if, this is not a simulation, this is actually a real result of, you know, what is the current business impact. And this, of course, something that could be used easily with, with a board level discussion in order to understand, you know, what, you know, what needs to be justified in terms of project budget, et cetera, especially in IT, OT environment situations where usually, you know, sometimes the CISO does not have the entire, let's say, ability to um, uh, make changes in the OT environment, you know, for the regular saying it's work, so don't touch. So this brings me to, to the last layer here is actually, you know, once we understand what are the problems, then comes the question, so what should we do about it? So um, behind, behind this graph, actually, there's a lot of mathematics. Um, so one of the metadata that we have behind each of the edges is actually what is the likelihood of, um, you know, a random attacker to, to do similar as we have done in the assessment. So 92% over here saying, you know, most hackers can do so. Bypassing your EDR system, right? Uh, or your IDS system is something that is quite more complex and only very experienced hackers do so. So you can also understand, you know, which type of attacks could be uh, used in different stages. Now, based on this, we can actually apply some graph algorithms and, for example, allow us to uh, predict what is the most probable attack route, right, a hacker will use in to get into the organization. Um, and that allows us actually to start prioritizing the issues. So we can go back to the organization and say, you know, for a second, forget all the other issues we found. This is actually where, uh, you know, we recommend you to have, you know, to focus. And as you probably remember also from, you know, high school mathematics, right, in order to cut a route in a graph, the only thing you need to do is cut one of the edges. And here comes the question, which edge you need to cut, right? Which project you need to implement in order to, you know, fix this route. So we have a weighting function that takes things like budget, resources, business impact, et cetera. And then we're able to come up with a clear recommendation to the organization that actually towards this business risk route, I know this is the specific topic that if you fixed will, you know, help you um, verify that each dollar you spent is actually uh, in this case will make the highest reduction in business risks. And you know what, once you fix this route, you're actually now going to the next or second most probable attack route. So this is an actually iterative process that we're doing, allowing organizations to, uh, you know, clear, create a very clear prioritized and justified uh, plan where they can see, you know, what is the risk reduction that is done with the current budget, you know, and what is the risk appetite they have, you know, if things are still uh, left un un uh, unfixed.
Um, again, all of that is uh, accompanied with a lot of information allowing the organization actually to manage also the process. This is not a single in time, this is actually a continuous process, allowing the organization to go through a very clear maturity improvement process, not only just one time snapshot. We also try to give the organization a clear understanding how they are in different domains in cybersecurity comparing to other organizations that we assessed. So this also allows them to see that, for example, this organization is very good in sensitive data, but in identity management, it's less mature, and that may be a topic the organization may will want to invest uh, going for, uh, uh, further. On top of Hiver, we also provide different, uh, you know, other types of services uh, that accompany this, you know, uh, continuous assessment activity. So from strategic cyber programs, digital transformations, etc., we help validate that SOC um, are indeed effective, and we're helping to enhance them different types of training, and we also provide 24 by seven support for incident response for companies who require that. And sometimes, you know, when you have the experts in the first few hours, you can make really reduce a lot of, a lot of damage that is uh, coming further. Um, li like uh, uh, my colleague from before, we actually created, uh, you know, for this uh, specific times, what we call the remote access assessment. So this is a very focused activity trying to look on you know, the changing landscape uh, in IT, uh, where we focus on both technology people and processes in a two weeks, very short uh, activity, allowing us also to help organization to quickly remediate things that related to the VPN, to the network segmentations from the VPN, right? And to enterprise hardening, you know, uh, especially when you have uh, uh, endpoints, uh, sorry, endpoints that are running from home networks, so you may be more vulnerable. We want to assess the email filtering configuration to see, you know, how good it is in stopping malicious files. What is the current uh, password policy and, and, and password hygiene? What we can find in threat intelligence uh, on the organization? We actually even do phishing simulation with Corona-like themes, right, to see how people are aware and I know even in the work environment and if required also do some incident response process review. So very specific tailored activity towards only the changes in the working from home situation. Yeah, so, so this is all uh, from Sai at this moment. I really want to thank you and I hope we can um, help. Uh, my contact details are also here. And thank you, Yari. The floor is back to you.